Have you been wondering what type of set you should be hitting for your specific skill level? We're going to be covering that in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to the Better at Beach YouTube channel. My name is Brandon. Today we are going to be talking about offensive design for different skill levels. So I'm going to take you through some ideas for beginners, intermediates, and advanced. And I'm going to be talking about what type of sets you should be asking for and where you can expect them to be, what they're going to look like, and how they're going to be effective to you. Alrighty, let's get started with beginners. So if you are a beginner in beach volleyball, then you need to be hitting pretty basic sets. And what I mean by basic sets doesn't really have to do with you as an attacker. It has to do what you're going to be asking from your setter. Because remember, if you're a beginner, then more than likely your setter is a beginner as well. So we need to try to make your job as easy as possible and the setter's job as easy as possible. A lot of the times we don't really communicate with our passer or our setter when we're beginners because we're thinking about so many things, but if we can open this line of communication, especially at the beginner level, I guarantee you it's going to make your job easier. So when we're thinking about a beginner in beach volleyball and trying to hit a consistent set that you can work on your footwork, you can work on your shot accuracy and your location of your attack, we need to go very basic. And that basic set is going to be up and down. A lot of the times whenever a beginner passes a ball, they just expect the ball to land on their half of the court and they kind of chase this ball around and just hope to get the ball on the other side of the net inside that big box, which is a great goal. But if we can start being more specific on what we're asking for up and, down, on your head. and where we're trying to hit, then that's going to level you up a little bit quicker. So. As a beginner, we're always going to use our voice to let our setters know where we want to hit. Right above you, up and down. And when we're making this call, we want to make sure that our instructions are in relation to the setter, not us as a hitter. So for instance, a lot of times you'll hear people say, right here, right here after they pass, but the setter is focusing on this set so much that they don't really have an idea where you are. So instead, we're going to use the words up and down or on you or straight up. And now this is a good thing because it's going to allow the setter to make an up and down set, which should be a lot easier. And it's also going to give you a better idea as an attacker where this set is going to end up because you're going to see that setter and you are going to chase them. So. If you pass the ball well, you are always gonna call for that up and down set, and that's going to give your setter more confidence, and it's gonna give you more confidence as an attacker to get your feet to the ball and make a good swing. We can't always say this, all right? So beginners, you can't always just call up and down. You have to look at your pass first. If you happen to pass the ball off the net, then you have to now create distance from your setter before you start your approach. And now that you're making distance from your setter before your approach, that set is also going to carry a little bit. A good frame of reference is if I pass the ball and it happens to be further off the net than 10 to 12 feet, then that is the opportunity for me to create space from my setter. And since I'm creating space from my setter, I now need to call for what we're going to call a push set, okay? So I was calling an up and down or a straight up set before. Now I've passed off the net. Now I need my setter to push the ball to me and cover some distance. And we always want that set to be right around the location. If I find my starting position and serve receive, I've split my half of the court, then my push set should land right in front of me. If that pass goes further off the court or further off the net, then this distance has to get a little bit bigger. It's gonna take some playing around by you. Just know that if the pass is in front of the 10 foot line, then you call up and down. If the set is behind the 10 foot line, then you would call for a push. Alrighty, it's time to level up. So now we're going to be talking about intermediate offensive design. And for intermediates, it's going to look very similar to the beginners. So you still have 
the option of running that up and down set, that's not gonna go anywhere. You still see professionals using that. And you also still have the option of running that push set if you pass off the net. The only two things that we're going to add to this are if you pass the ball well in front of that 10 foot line, now intermediates, you can start thinking about running that push set in this location. This is a good idea because you're going to start making this blocker move left to right, which in intermediate style play, you're starting to see a blocker come up to the net. And if we can have that blocker moving out to me, it opens up my options to shoot or hit and find the court for an easier point. So same idea, if I pass the ball well and I call for a push set as an intermediate, it would still land pretty much right in front of me from my passing position. So after I make that pass, I would shuffle out, I would call for my push set, even if it's a perfect pass, and I'm going to use my footwork to come meet that ball in the zone that's about 10 feet inside. It's up to you to find that location of a happy place for you to try to figure out where you find your sweet spot and feel the most comfortable. For me, I really like my energy going into this cross court. So if I call for my push set and it goes too far, then a lot of the times I feel like I'm fading away. So make sure you take some time to really work with your setter to find this happy spot. And finally, the last one for an intermediate is we can start thinking about running back sets. Hopefully, if you are an intermediate, then your setter is an intermediate, and they should be able to make a really good set whether this ball is going in front of them or if they're lifting it up for it to go behind. The reason that running a back set is important is because one, if you pass the ball in a, in a position where your setter doesn't have a whole lot of room, then you need to think about running behind that setter to open up your offensive options. The other reason we would use this is if there is a lot of wind. And most of the time, if there is a side wind, then you want to put yourself into a position where your approach is going into the wind. So a lot of the times we have a west to east wind in California where we are today. So if I was playing on the right side of the court, my right hand is to the west, my left hand is to the east. So after I pass this ball, if I wanna run behind my setter, then it will allow me to hit back into the wind, which is going to allow me to hit harder and be more aggressive. So for intermediates, you are running the up and down set the push set, whether you were on the net or off the net. And now we've also introduced a back set, which should be very close to the setter still. We're not expanding any space. That's gonna be an advanced level set. We are going to be staying close to our setter. Hey, before we move on to advanced offensive design, if you are a beginner and intermediate and you are looking to up your game, make sure that you check out our volleyball mastery program at betteratbeach.com is going to give you access to a live coach. It's going to introduce all these ideas and it's going to allow you to ask questions along the way. Alrighty, and finally, we have the advanced offensive design. And this is where we get a little bit fun and creative. When we're talking about advanced offensive design, we're at a point where we need to start thinking about tempo. The two types of sets that we're going to introduce on a quick tempo are going to be a quick outset and a quick onset. We're also gonna show you what a quick back would look like as well. So whenever we're thinking about running a quick tempoed set, before when we were talking about beginners and intermediates, a lot of the stress goes on to the attacker to use their footwork to go hit the set that their setter gave them. There's not a whole lot of stress on the setter as long as they put that ball up in a good hittable window. But when we move on to advanced attacking and we're thinking about running a tempoed set, now the responsibilities have been shared between the setter and the hitter. But the idea is same exact thing. If I'm running a quick out set, then this pass is going to be made the same as normal. I would make my shuffle. My setter is going to try to find me in this window of probably where my pass initiated, but making me try to cut this ball off, make sure that my momentum is going back into the court, make sure you're not pushing this hitter too far. So if I'm running a quick outset, then I need to make sure that I'm still picking this ball off maybe 
five to 10 feet from the sideline and I should have all my options available. If our first step on an up and down set or a normal push set is our right foot going down as a timing step while the setter's touching the ball, then when we're going for a tempoed set, we almost need to be moving on to our second step as the setter's touching the ball. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit quicker of a tempo of your footwork as well as a tempo of the set. So as I've made my pass, I'm getting onto my timing step. I've made my first step a little early and I'm starting to get onto my left step as my setter's getting ready to touch the ball. The reason I say that this responsibility is now shared is because once my attacker has started to make this footwork and they're a little bit earlier than they normally would be, then it's my job to use my vision as I'm making this set to pick up on their energy as an attacker and what their timing is going to be. Just because we're running a quick set doesn't mean that this set is going to look the exact same every single time. We're running a quicker tempo set. So we have to make sure that yes, we're going to get this ball to our hitter a little bit quicker than normal, but we also have to make sure that our attacker can still make a good effort to swing at every single option that they want. If we just throw that ball through their hitting window, they might start to miss. So make sure setters, as you are going through these different options, you are trying to pick up on this, the attacker's footwork so that you can meet them in that happy place so that they can get good kills. The next set that we're talking about is a quick on set or a quick on you set, which means that it's pretty much a quick set, but right on top of the setter. So if we go all the way back to the beginner's idea and we think about just that nice up and down set that's really high, probably clearing the antenna by 10 feet, this is going to be the same location as that set, but the height of the set isn't going to clear the top of the antenna. So our attacker is going to still do the same thing. They're going to make this pass. They're going to shuffle out, making this blocker think that they are hitting a normal push set but then at the last second, they're gonna close this space and hit a quick set. Some people call it a two ball if you play indoor and you're still allowing yourself to get this ball quick to hit cross court or sliver it down the line to get a quick point. The last thing is just the exact same set except you can start running behind. If you're able to find this quick tempoed set out to the pin, a quick set on you and a quick set behind, those should be all the options that you need to really mess with that defense. Remember that your main reason that you are running quick tempoed sets is to make the defense unbalanced. So whenever you're running this quick tempoed sets, it doesn't really mean that you need to bounce these balls or hit as hard as you can. It's just a matter of realizing that they are off balance on the other side and you can just pat this point down for a quick score. Now you know all of the different types of sets that you can use based on your skill level for offensive design. If we didn't cover a specific set that you are looking for, make sure you leave us a comment below and let us know what are you looking for? What types of sets? Obviously, your arsenal could be endless and you can run a different offense than anybody else in the country if you think of it. So if you want some help, if you have some ideas, if you want us to talk about a specific instance of an offensive set, then please leave that comment below.